Yaro Yaro Laro Yani Yaro Yari <laughs> Laurel All right, well, it's Facilitation Friday, and if you don't understand what I'm talking about, neither do I. Uh, no, we just had this thing this week uh, where some meme went around. It was kind of a what do you hear question, right? And there was an audio recording, and supposedly you either hear Laurel or you hear Yanni. Yanni with a Y. Um, I used to play with Yanni with an I, but that's not what we're talking about here. Anyway, the reason I'm bringing this up is not to debate. I hear Laurel personally. Some people hear Yanni. I don't, I don't know. Uh, is to talk about, within the context of facilitation, welcome to Facilitation Friday, by the way. I'm Kalani. Uh, I was um, relating that, I was reflecting on that, you know, do you hear what I hear? Uh, and, you know, it, it that kind of experiment where people hear different things when they listen to the same thing, it just speaks to subjectivity, right? And this is something that I, I talked about in my book, The Way of Music, which is what we're working with today. And there's, uh, on, one, on page 159, I talk about the four stages of learning, uh, which was in a Maslow kind of construct or model. And then I also talk about how you can't really be sure uh, why somebody does something or what somebody perceives. Uh, it's not going to necessarily be the same thing that you perceive or that you're, you understand something to be or something to mean. And of course, we all know this because we have multiple versions of you know many religions, uh, atheism. J that's just in the spiritual realm, but you know this applies to everything in life. Life is subjective. People's human experience is subjective, meaning it just, it's about them, it relates to them, and we can only really have our experience of anything, of life in general, or any specific thing. I mean, this is, gets to the, it's a Pandora's box, basically. But with regard to facilitation, uh, let's talk about this, uh, because you, as a facilitator of music, whether you're working one-on-one -on -one with somebody as a teacher or you're working in a group as a music educator, music therapist, music facilitator, or a facilitator of anything, we want to keep this in mind. It's very important for our facilitative skills to really understand that everybody has their own version of whatever the thing is, whether it's a concept or an item or an action or a thing, you know, whatever it is. Uh, even if you are not doing anything related to music, if you want to facilitate a meeting or a discussion, this is critical to remember. So I welcome you all, whatever your goals are. So let's talk about the four stages of learning really quick. Um, those were labeled in the following way. Uh, number one, unconscious incompetence. You're not aware of what you can't do. You're kind of oblivious to what's happening. You don't know that you don't know something. You don't know that you're... Think about the people that audition for American Idol who think they're awesome, and according to everyone else, they're not. <laughs> Bless their hearts, all right? But those people. Stage two is conscious incompetence. You know that you're not good at something. You, you see what it is. It might be singing, it might be playing, and you know what great is, and you know that that's not descriptive of you, right? You, 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 know, you know that something can be done, but you, you're not able to do it. Uh, stage number three, conscious competence, right? You know what it is, and you're aware that you can do it. And then stage four is, if you've been following this and you're, you're going to put it together, because uh, there's only two categories, uh, yes, the fourth stage is unconscious competence. And we see this a lot in what we would call mastery, uh, whether it's a master musician or a master of anything, a speaker, you know, a comedian, uh, a politician, artists of various types, you know, anything where the person really just has been doing something since a very young age or they've achieved a, a level of skill where they're really not consciously aware 
that they've achieved competency. They don't think about it. And in fact, if I've asked some of my teachers, uh, you know, how do you do that? How do you do that? And they're just like, I don't know. I just do it, right? It just, when I start playing, it just happens. So that's those people. And uh, so these are, these are our four stages of learning. Uh, but let's, so we need to be aware of that. Sometimes people aren't aware uh, that they're, you know, that they're, they're not achieving something. They might think they are, and then they're not. Uh, it's kind of like the difference between, and I'm going to talk about this in another episode, but I want to touch on it now. It's like the difference between going through the actions of getting a job done and actually doing the task. And I'll give you an example. Uh, if you were going to clean the floor, let's say you get out your broom and your mop and you go and you, you know, you use the tools, but at the end of the process, the floor isn't that clean. You've just kind of moved the dirt around with the broom and the mop. And uh, if somebody had asked you, did you clean the floor? You'd say, yes, I did. But the question is, is the floor clean as a result of your actions? And the answer to that might be no. So, you know, did you go through the actions of doing something? Yes, but did you actually do the job? Maybe, maybe not. That's kind of the difference. All right. So when you're working as a facilitator, you would ask yourself the same question. Am I using facilitative actions? Am I using facilitative language? But are you actually facilitating? In other words, are you actually helping people do something in a way that feels good for them and that meets their needs? It's an important question to ask. And you as a facilitator may be unconsciously incompetent. <laughs> you may not realize that what you're doing is not effective. And I certainly have been an ineffective facilitator and teacher in my life. And luckily, I've had friends that have pointed that out because actually getting what we would call negative feedback, you could call it honest feedback, brutally honest feedback. Uh, when feedback just means somebody else sharing with you uh, their experience of you or their perception of how others might perceive of you objectively uh, or sometimes sub sub subjectively. Uh, but getting that feedback is the, that's really the only valuable feedback. You, you might do something and people would say, hey, that was great. You know, that's not helpful. Um, but I had a friend bring something to my attention one time where I was a little bit unskillful I'll just, I'm being kind <laughs> to myself when I use that word. I would say I was unskillful in how I was facilitating, how I was managing a group. And I think, to be honest, I was not being kind. I was not being thoughtful uh, about some of the members in the group. And fortunately, that person and I had a good, not the person in the group, but my friend who was there gave me some feedback and, and gave me some honest feedback, and that was worth pounds and pounds of gold uh, from, for, in terms of my own personal growth. So if you can get that honest feedback, get it, even if you disagree and even if it makes you a little sad, all right? That's the best kind of feedback you can get. All right, so not to have this go on and on and on, but I want to talk a little bit about... Uh, what we think, why we might think somebody is doing something or not doing something. And relating to the four stages of learning, it could be, so let's say you're, you're, you're trying to teach a lesson or you're facilitating a process or you're just trying to facilitate a discussion. Let's say that you, you know, you ask somebody a question. All right, just to keep it simple. I ask somebody a question and they don't answer. Um, now, there's, there could be several, at least three reasons for them not answering. And it's important that I don't jump to any conclusions or make assumptions about why they're not answering. And this applies to anything that's happening in life, uh, musically or otherwise. One, they may not understand uh, the question or they may not uh, have, well, yeah, I would say they might be they might not have understood the question. They might be unaware that I had asked the question. You know, I might have not gotten their attention first, so that's on me. Uh, they might be 
confused as to what the question is or that it was a question or what it means, all right? So that's, that's one possibility. Uh, another possibility is that they are incapable of answering the question. They heard the question, but they don't have an answer to the question. And they're not telling you they don't have an answer, they're just not answering it. All right, that's another possibility. A third possibility is that they heard the question, they understood the question, they have an answer, but they just don't want to tell you for whatever reason. Okay, so there might be more uh, reasons why you don't get an answer to a question, but those are there's at least three possibilities right there. So as, as a facilitator, as a teacher, as a therapist, uh, as a friend, as a family member, uh, you know, as a parent, or, or, a, or a child of somebody, when we're interacting with people in the world, uh, we want to keep these things in mind that sometimes people are not conscious uh, of what's happening. They're either they don't know an answer, or they're not sure what something means, or they have a different idea about what something is. It's, it's, there's so many pieces to putting together effective communication that it never hurts to clarify, to ask questions. Do, so. I asked you a question, do you, do you understand the question? Is your idea of what I'm talking about in the question the same as mine? Do they match? Are they close enough? Are we on the same page? You know, all those kinds of things. And those are the kind of things that lead to better communication, better facilitation, and, you know, hopefully more um, enjoyable outcomes for everyone, okay? I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, if, you, you know, if you're interested, you can pick up a copy of The Way of Music. I'll leave a link below. But let me know what you think of these topics. If you have something to add, if you have a question, I'll do my best to answer it. But I'm hoping you're, you will answer each other's questions below. And as always, please be kind and courteous in your comments. All right. I'm Kalani. Thanks for watching. And thanks for joining me on World Drum Club.